Hello again. I've gotten a request to show how to do a load shear moment diagram for a cantilevered beam with a uniformly distributed load. Well, that seems like a pretty fair question, so let's go ahead and do that. Oops, got my marker right here. Let's, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a cantilevered beam. Now this is a, just a board. By the way, this is a fairly interesting board. It's made out of laminated bamboo. It's a product called ban uh, Lambu, and uh, it's really uniform, it's cheap. Well, there's nothing more sustainable than this. Basically, Lambu is basically grass, so we're not going to run out of that anytime soon. Anyway, so I've got this beam here, and I've got it clamped on this end. Okay, this is this is a clamp, so there's no displacement at this end, and there's no slope at this end. Get my head out of the way. Let me hold it that way, maybe. Now we're going to assume we've got a uniform load going down the beam. Now this might be the result of stacking something along the beam. Maybe we stack bricks or sandbags or people or something like that on there. So we've got a load down and the beam's going to eventually, the, the load shear moment diagram is going to show that this bends down. So that's the cantilever beam. Let's draw this. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, cantilevered at the left end, all right? Now we're going to put a distributed load on it here. And I'm going to draw it in this way. There. Now, you can just draw the distributed load above or below the beam as you choose. I find I have fewer problems when I draw the downward loads below the beam and the upward loads above the beam. It just makes a good visual cue, and I, uh, I mess up less often, basically. Okay, I need a positive sign convention. There's my positive sign convention. Positive x, positive y, positive moment. One of the uh, few advantages to being left-handed is I can, I can show you the positive sign convention. It's still right. All right, so there's my uh, beam. I'm going to make it two meters. Oops. There, two meters long, and I'm going to make that one minus a thousand newtons per meter. Now, for those of you who still aren't comfortable with metric units, by the way, shame on you. Uh, thousand newtons is a little more than I weigh. I'm about 210, 210 pounds, so that's around 900 newtons. Okay, that's a little more than me, but not a lot more than me. It's the weight of a pretty good sized guy. Um, so I got this. Now, the very first thing I need to do when solving any strength of materials problem is to apply or draw a free body diagram. If I'm solving a strength of materials problem and I'm not drawing a free body diagram, something's wrong. You better have a pretty good reason for not starting there. So let's do that. Okay, now I'm going to I've cut it here, so I'm going to replace that cut with the reaction forces. I'm going to have to have a shear force and a moment at that end. So let's just draw those in the positive sense here. So I've got V0 and M0 at that end. Now, this just for the purposes of calculating the response forces, I, or the reaction forces, I can concentrate this load in the, in the correct place. Well, it's 2 meters times 1,000 newtons per meter. It's going to be 2,000 newtons down and I'll apply the load at the centroid of this shape right here. Well, the centroid is just the metal. It's a rectangle. So there's 2,000 newtons down, and that's one meter. And so there we go. Now, I can't, I can't uh, concentrate this for the purposes of the load shear moment diagram, but I can for the reaction forces. The reaction forces at the end don't know the difference between this and this. To them, it looks the same. But for the load shear moment diagram, this and this are very, very different. So I can concentrate the load to calculate the reaction forces, but I've got to work with the distributed load to draw the load shear moment diagram. The load shear moment diagram is going to go over there. Okay? Well, this is pretty obvious. That's going to, the V0 is going to be 2,000 newtons. Now, the moment created by that force right there makes the beam want to rotate in the clockwise direction. Well, counterclockwise is my positive, but to counter the moment from there, this moment has to go clockwise. So that moment is positive 2,000 newton meters. Positive because it counters this, 2,000 because that's 2,000 newtons with a one meter arm. So 2,000 newton meters, we've got that. Now, we've got everything we need to know right now to start drawing the load shear moment diagram. Let me, let me do this. I'm going to need these here in a second.
Okay, so there's those. I'm going to erase this. We're going to draw the load shear moment diagram there and do our calculations over here. Now, while I'm erasing this, let me tell you, I've been very careful to put my, my sign convention there. In fact, I might just keep that there. But you need to know that there's actually going to be two sign conventions working here. This is going to work fine until we get down to the moment diagram. All right? And we're going to actually have to apply something called the designer sign convention. I want to explain that. All right, so let's, let's draw this. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's draw the loads we had from our free body diagram. Now let's see, there's my distributed load down. And that's minus 1,000 newtons. Now I also had 2,000 newtons, I'm sorry, 2,000 newtons per meter. I had 2,000 newtons up. And I also had a reaction force there, reaction moment I should say, which was 2,000 newtons per meter. So let's draw the shear now. Okay, so the way we're going to draw the shear, shear is just accumulated load as you go down the beam. Well, what does accumulated mean? Accumulated means you add it up. Well, adding up, that sounds like area, that sounds like integration to me. So let's, let's draw the distributed load here. We need a function for that. And this is about as simple a function as there could possibly be. It's just minus 1,000. It's just a constant. All right. Well, the shear function is just going to be V0, which is the initial shear right there, um, plus an integral from 0 to x, Lx dx. Now, before I figure this out, and it's pretty easy to figure out, let's take a look at what this means. V0, okay, that's the initial shear that's happening right there. L of x, well, that's just that number right there. Now, let's think about units for a second. V0, that's shear, that's going to be in pounds, or I'm sorry, newtons, until I was raised with English units. That's in newtons per meter. Well, how are we going to reconcile that? The thing is right there, dx. dx is what? It's a little infinitesimally small distance. Okay? It's as small as it needs to be, but not zero. That's the whole idea behind calculus. It's infinitesimally small, but it's an infinitesimally small length. This has units of meters. So, minus 1,000 newtons per meter there times meters. Perfect. I'm going to, the, the units for that integral are going to come out as newtons. That's exactly what we want. All right, so this is going to be, what did we decide? That was... Uh, 1,000, 2,000, yeah, 2,000, plus the integral 0 to x of minus 1,000 dx. Now, another thing I want to tell you about um, integration limits. They go from 0 to x. Well, 0 is obvious. That's because that's what we want to start here and move there. But what about that x? Probably you've, already, you've seen integrals that have uh, they're definite integrals that have limits on them. This is always a number, right? Not a, not a letter, not a variable. Well, the reason it's a number, usually, is because you're trying to find the area of a shape. Well, I'm not trying to find the area of a shape. I'm trying to find the accumulated area as a function of x. So it's perfectly legitimate to put that x in there. x is just a number. I just haven't assigned it yet. So that's just a placekeeper. So it's okay to put x in there. So this is 2,000 plus, I'm sorry, minus minus 1,000 x evaluated from 0 to x. Well, that's 1,000 x minus 1,000 times 0. So that 0 pretty much just goes away. So there's v of x. Well, what's that going to look like? Let's just do exactly what the math says. Let's start at 2,000, and let's decrease linearly down to the, to the other end. So that's 2,000 right there. And that's positive shear that decreases linearly. Okay, let's stop and take a look at this now. The shear is positive and decreases linearly. What happens is the slope here equals the altitude there. That sounds kind of like calculus to me. And the accumulated area here is that. Well, I've started at 2,000 and I'm subtracting area away from that 2,000 until I finally get down to zero. Right? So this is a doing exactly what it should do. All right? So um, we've got this nice linearly decreasing uh, 
uh, shear. We put one more arrow in there. And it goes to zero at the end, which is, makes sense because we have a cantilever free end, shear is zero at the end. So this passes the sniff test, that passes the sniff test. Let's, uh, let's write L of X right there. Let's bring it on home here. Let's do the moment diagram. And this is the one that's going to be confusing if, if any of this is. Uh, let's see, I don't mean. There. Okay, now the last thing we need to know is what's the moment diagram going to look like? Now, here's the problem. I've decided that that is a positive moment, right? This is positive. And I know one other thing. I know this slope, remember the altitude there is the slope there. So the slope is going to start out as a positive number and the slope is going to go to zero. So this function is going to look like that. Hmm. But I got zero moment at the end. I have a great big moment at this end. The free end has zero moment. This end has a big point moment on it. Hmm. There's one other thing. The designer sign convention says that, uh, this isn't very flexible, um, beams that curve up in the middle and down on the ends are negative, and ones that curve up on the ends and down in the middle are positive. Okay. Now, this is going to be the silliest thing I'm ever going to write on the board, but you're going to remember it. This, that's positive. And that's negative, according to the designer sign convention. So, how do you remember which one's positive and which one's negative? All right. That's happy. That's positive. Let me put it, give it eyebrows. That's negative. Okay, silliest thing ever, but you're going to remember it. Positive, negative. That's the designer's sign convention. Because of the designer sign convention, the moment here makes that beam bend in a negative sense. So rather than this being what my moment diagram is going to look like, this is what it's going to look like. It's a little bit of a curve, but you get the idea here. Right? That's what it's going to look like with that being minus 2,000. Newton meters. Did I get that in the frame? Boy, I just got that in the frame. Okay, let's let's move it up a little bit. Okay, so that's 2,000 at that end, at the left end, and it goes to zero at the right end now. Let's go through the math just to make sure. Okay, moment of x is m0, which now is going to be negative according to the designer sign convention plus the integral 0 to x of 2,000 minus 1,000 x dx. Let's get that shear out of the way there. Okay, again, real easy to integrate. So minus 2,000 plus 2,000, let's do this, 2,000 x minus 500 x squared evaluated from 0 to x. Okay, again, because we're subtracting out uh, the uh, second term here where x equals 0, if you evaluate this, you're going to get that right there. Well, okay, let's think about this a second. What if x is 0? I get minus 2,000. That's good. What if x is 2? Okay, well, let's see. If x is 2, I get, let's do this. That had better be zero, right? Okay, so 2,000 plus, uh-oh, 4,000 minus 500 times 4. Okay, 2,000, I'm sorry, minus 2,000, there we go. Minus 2,000 plus 4,000, that's 2,000. Minus 500 times 4, which is also 2,000. So m of 2 equals 0, and that works. So this is how we're going to do this. Load, shear, moment, 
designer sign convention. Right? So there you have it. That's what the load shear moment diagram looks like.